Hurricane Barrel has already made history, and unfortunately, this storm is going to get stronger just before it gets to the Windward Islands. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegg is back with you. In this video, we're going to spend a lot of time on Barrel, of course, to give our friends in the islands what they can expect over the next 48 to 72 hours as what looks to be a major hurricane coming toward the Windward Islands. Then we're going to jump over onto the western side of the Caribbean. We still have a system that could develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm over the next 24 to 48 hours. And believe it or not, there's another storm right on the heels of Hurricane Barrel that could impact the same places that Barrel could. So this is certainly what we did not want to see uh, in the first month of hurricane season or second month or at all, really. But it's a sign of, unfortunately, what could be coming and what a lot of forecast entities uh, were forecasting. So here is Barrel, 80 mile per hour storm as of 8 p.m. Eastern time on June 29th. Want to point out a couple of things here that are ominous. Um, we've already seen Barrel rapidly intensify, and I'll get into the historic part coming up a little later in the video because I do want to make sure that my friends on the islands know what is coming in their direction. We have uh, the darker red blurb right there on the left side we also have another really dark brown or rust rust color blurb right there those are big time cumulonimbus towers the thunderstorm towers that are popping up when you start to see them kind of dueling each other one on each side that is uh explosive thunderstorm development and when you see them kind of rotating around each other like that that is unfortunately one of the precursors to rapid intensification. We've already seen Barrel again go from tropical depression to a hurricane rapidly, and now we could see this go from a strong hurricane to a major hurricane, which is Cat 3, um, very quickly, unfortunately, as well as the environment is August-like or September-like in late June. So not the best news, of course. Uh, not only for what we're dealing with right now, but for what could be to come for the rest of the season, that we shouldn't have a hurricane right there in the month of June. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty nuts. All right, so let's get to it. We're going to break down the forecast here, and really, we're looking at Sunday night into Monday morning for a major hurricane to be closing in on the island of Barbados. Now, there's still some uncertainty as to where the worst of the worst could go, and what this cone represents, again, is where the center could track. So, if the center is right in the middle here, we're still talking about the whole entire hurricane being like that wide, okay? So just keep that in mind that the worst of the worst is right around where the center is going to be, whether it follows that line or follows down here. That will still have to be fine-tuned over the next couple of days. But regardless, there's going to be impacts anywhere from Martinique to Dominica all the way down to Grenada, even Trinidad and Tobago with some tropical storm force winds. But the worst of the worst likely going to happen right here from through St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, into Grenada, into, uh, into parts of the Windward Islands, really all the Windward Islands. So again, just keep that in mind as we move forward here. Um, and that's going to be, again, Sunday night into Monday. Note that we get into uh, 2 o'clock on Monday afternoon now. This is going to be on July 1st. We have a strengthening storm as it pulls away uh, from the islands uh, the windward islands so that gets us through monday again it's going to be a rough go of things from about sunday night all the way into monday night now we still have a major hurricane rolling through the eastern caribbean this is super rare in our last video we talked about how the eastern caribbean is typically a hurricane graveyard in june it's actually expected to strengthen in this area because of lower than normal wind shear and ridiculously warm water temperatures. One of the things that we're going to watch is we're partially in the cone here in the Dominican Republic in Haiti. Remember, that means that the center could bounce anywhere within here, and then we're talking about impacts well outside of that cone. So we're still watching for potential impacts in Puerto Rico, although it appears that the worst of the worst will stay to your south, even in the Virgin Islands and parts of the Leeward Islands. We're still watching again for potential outer bands sliding through, things of that nature. So you still want to make sure you're paying attention to this forecast. Then we start to look for the worst of the worst in and around Jamaica. Again, there's still a very large spread here. Uh, if it stays where if the center goes right in through here, we're talking about a major system, a strong category two hurricane. If it goes down here, certainly impacts would be much less. Same if it went up closer to Cuba, but then that would increase our impacts on the southeast side of Cuba. So a lot of things to be ironed out as now we're getting into that uh, day four, day five time frame. And then it's another heads up for the Cayman Islands. 
and into the Yucatan Peninsula, where we just got rid of one storm. We are dealing with the disturbance right now that could become a tropical system, and then we could have another one and another one. So again, this is very atypical uh, where these storms are and how strong these storms are for June standards. I want to go back to the islands, and we're going to focus a little bit later on in the video um, about Invest 94L, which is that disturbance that could become a named system and then impact eastern Mexico again. So here we go. These are the wind opportunities for hurricane force winds. This is going to be sustained wind, 75 miles an hour or stronger. And we're really looking into this yellow area at this point anyway. Those are the highest probability, greater than 50% shot for those sustained hurricane hurricane force winds and again those no doubt will go up as the as the confidence in the forecast goes up because it does unfortunately look like that we are going to have a major hurricane going through the islands we're going to get real in depth here island by island and talk about some of the potential wind gusts i want to caution that this is one model run here so i don't want to put too much grain of salt into what island gets the amount of wind None because there still could be the wobbles and the bouncing and going up or north or south and things like that. But I do want to give you an idea of what could be coming to the islands. And again, this forecast will be fine tuned. Again, this is the European forecast of what barrel could be. And we're going to dissect the winds here. And we can look inside with our telestrator and with our little dabber, as I like to call it, to see what the model wants. And again, right around here, it has it as 83 mile per hour wind gust. It doesn't look too impressive there. I will say say though that the european always kind of downplays the wind in this situation we're already having winds sustained of 80 miles an hour so again that just goes to show how atypical this is because this kind of model really hasn't caught on now you see the purple start to show up now we have uh the potential for some extra strengthening and then there we go so now we have winds right around the center of 119 miles an hour on the island itself 57 now remember what i cautioned the forecast from the euro right here has the center if the center goes on the northern side of the cone that puts those 115 to 120 mile per hour wind gusts on the island so that is why we have to be prepared still in barbados for that major hurricane because it can really bounce anywhere from right here uh to right about there according to the official forecast from the national hurricane center so i want to zoom this out or push push this forward a little bit more and then take it a little bit closer in so here we go uh looking just to show you where all the islands are um so even in parts of the leeward islands we're talking about 33 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts so maybe even getting uh, tropical storm force wind gusts um as far north as some of the virgin islands as i'll show you in just one second but really as we get into grenada saint vincent and the grenadines saint lucia this is where we could have some of the, of the biggest winds here again gusting to 75 85 miles an hour and again this is after the strongest part of the storm pushes through really in between grenada saint vincent and the Gren grenadines and saint lucia we could be looking at those 100 plus mile per hour wind gusts so again uh, nasty situation coming on the pipeline for our friends in the Windward Islands. Taking this further out, you see the purple expand a little bit more and then even get stronger. So now we have gusts to 130 miles an hour. Thankfully, at this point, it's a no man's land. And I say thankfully lightly because we're still talking about a major hurricane coming through the Windward Islands. Um, but it is forecast to continue to strengthen there. And it really doesn't get much weaker uh, the official forecast had it getting weaker a little bit anyway. By this point, the European model says no. Here is Puerto Rico for reference. And just to give you, if it goes on this path, I mean, 30 mile per hour winds doesn't seem like that much, but we're talking about gusts maybe to tropical storm force on the southern end of Puerto Rico and then into uh, the Virgin Islands. Let's check out some of the Virgin Islands and parts of the, the Leeward Islands. And again, it's uh, pretty nasty all around. So that is the potential for that in terms of the water coming with this this is the fresh water and this really gives you an idea of the potential track at least to what were the model things and again this is some of the rainfall that could be coming down the pipeline and this is no doubt going to be undersold um and even then it's pretty impressive anywhere from three to six inches of rain again we're talking about double digits here so again i mentioned before take the numbers exactly with a grain of salt and look at the impacts that we're talking about a major hurricane coming through i think i said that like four or five times now so just keep that in mind 
Uh, big time waves also coming to parts of the Caribbean, anywhere from 10 to 20 feet off the southern end of Puerto Rico. You saw that light up as well. So, of course, when you have a hurricane out there, uh, we're talking about big time waves, as you might imagine. All right, as I ramble on, uh, for anybody watching from the United States, I don't think this is coming to the United States. I know there's always the question of, is this going to lift north? And I'm going to show you why it's not. Now, there's only one spot, I think, maybe extreme southeast Texas. We just have to kind of keep this in the back of your head a little bit. And I'm going to show you why. Here we go with this separate with the different things. So right here, this big donut, if you will, right at the bottom of your screen where you see my mouse, that is where barrel is expected to be on Monday, 7 o'clock. So July 1st, it's going to be to the west of the Antilles now. Uh, I do have the spaghetti models overlaid on this as well to kind of get a gauge on what is happening. So a couple of things here going forward. I have this now stopped at midnight on Thursday. So this is now on July 4th. It is going to be extremely hot for the 4th of July from South Texas through the Deep South into Florida. The reason why it's going to be so hot on the 4th, I get it, it's summer, but we're talking like crazy heat, mid to upper 90s, maybe triple digits. It's the same entity that is going to protect the North Gulf Coast in the southeast corner of the United States. This big ridge of high pressure that's anchored over the southeast is not going to allow barrel to lift north. But unfortunately, what this is going to do is that clockwise motion around high pressure is going to steer it right through Jamaica or close by Jamaica, and then unfortunately close to Belize or the Yucatan Peninsula, and then eventually possibly again into eastern Mexico. So I'm going to put that back into motion. Now, I mentioned about Texas being in play, and you see some of the things getting convoluted, so we do have to watch that. The only way this would come north is if barrel slows down or this upper high speeds up because if this moves out towards Bermuda, it will have the opposite side. It'll go clockwise wind flow around that, and then it's going to pick barrel up and then lift it in this direction. So there's still reason to be on guard, maybe in Texas, maybe in Louisiana. But for the most part, this expansive high pressure across the South should protect the United States. All right. We just spent more than 12 minutes on barrel. Sorry, I was rambling on, but I, I do want to make sure that we get the best information out to our friends in the islands. Uh, this formation chance has gone up, but I want to show you this big red area. Another beefy tropical wave coming off of Africa. When I say this is like September or August, this is what I'm talking about. We shouldn't have these robust waves being able to survive at this point, but that's what we get when we have the juiced Atlantic. That one is likely going to be named. All right, so before we get into the rest of this video, which is going to focus on the next disturbance 94L, the invest, I want to alert you to a free source that you can get to stay updated on the tropics. It's called my Tropics Watch newsletter. It is free. Scan that QR code on your screen or head to clickorlando.com slash newsletters. There's a bunch of newsletters on that page. We are based out of Central Florida. That's why our website is clickorlando.com. Uh, slash newsletters and find the tropics watch one put your email in sign up i visit you every monday and as needed well this is this is going to be one of those as needed times so i'm going to give you some updates on that uh over the weekend with the tropics watch newsletter but uh sign up for that it's free if you want to stay updated on the tropics in the non hypey way and in a way uh we talk about science and meteorology and some of the actual facts that are going on with the storm rather than the scare tactics here's also other ways to get to me uh if you have any questions very responsive in the comment section on this channel and on my other social things. I know it can be a really scary time um, when you're going through these things. Uh, I'm here for you guys. So just just keep that in mind if, uh, if you're interested anyway. Uh, hit me up on all those platforms. All right. So without further ado, we're going to head to the other side of the Caribbean. Um, we talked about this at length several months ago that the La Nina following a strong El Nino typically paints a lot of trouble in the Caribbean. Unfortunately, it's the 
about to be July, one month in a hurricane season, and we can have four storms going through the Caribbean. Of course, Alberto, regardless if this does develop and this is the visible satellite, I just wanted to show you kind of where it was, but that's why it kind of disappears. I wish it was Thanos snapping the whole storm away, but it's just because the sun is going down. Nonetheless, this is what we're watching potentially uh, develop over the next 24 hours before it reaches land. So here is the European forecast again. All the yellow and green on here represent the rainfall, and we're really focused on the arrows. Look at the twisting right here. That would suggest a tropical cyclone, which if it would, and if we do have winds greater than or 40 miles an hour or greater, this would get a name as well. So we're going to have a battle, unfortunately, again, for the sea storm, which is Chris. And again, we could round out the week with... Three more named storms to join Alberto. We we talked about this also weeks ago that when everybody was saying that, oh, the forecasts are wrong, we haven't had a storm yet. Unfortunately, it's playing out as expected or, or unfortunately even exceeding expectations because what I was talking about before about Barrel already making history, that is the easternmost hurricane to ever develop in recorded history um in the month of june we typically do not see strong hurricanes impact the windward islands in the month of june the last major hurricanes to impact the windward islands were in were ivan and maria those were not in june those were at the peak of hurricane season so i can't stress this enough how atypical this is to be dealing with a storm that's going to go through a second rapid intensification phase and it's not in the month of august or september so this is literally history in the making unfortunately it doesn't matter what month it is that we know the impacts are coming for our friends in the caribbean islands so we're thinking about you guys and we got you covered again i hope you found this information helpful if you found this content helpful please hit that thumbs up button it is my hope that on sunday night i'll be able to hop on here for a special edition of tropics watch live so be looking for that i'm going to try my best to make that happen at some point tomorrow evening likely at around seven o'clock or eight o'clock eastern in that ballpark um again i'll be active on the social channels again to kind of alert you uh what's going on um in terms of if i can make that happen or not but it is my hope to keep everybody updated on that as i continue to ramble on but i hope you found this helpful if you did hit that thumbs up button please hit that subscribe button we got you covered and we will catch you next time